So we called that 13th and Lafayette Street. Here in our city, we would always go by the numbers first. Not Lafayette and 13th Street. Kind of sounds funny, doesn't it? Just even now. Doesn't it sound funny? It was always, what? 13th and Lafayette. Numbers first and then the other street. Whatever angle it was, it didn't matter. But it was always 13th and Lafayette. Now I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to continue to walk. Because I want to show you where my hero lived. Okay, I don't know if they still live there. I'm not going to tell you who it is. I'm just going to share a little bit of life about my first hero. All right, I love you guys. And uh, I'll be right back. So check this out. Guys, welcome back. I'm here on Lafayette, just down from 13th and Lafayette. Which way does it go? Lafayette 13th? Does that sound right? No. 13th and Lafayette, right? Look, here I am in the truck. Here I am. So we're gonna keep on walking. Now listen, I'm gonna have to buzz through this really quickly. I'm just showing you around. Maybe a lot of this stuff is unnecessary. The, the crucial points I wanted to share with you is the fact that we spent a lot of time in the backyard, which was a playground, doing all kinds of games. We played games out front in the street, and I'm not recommending that you do that. Please don't do that. Please don't play in the street. We did. We also went stop sign hopping. Did you ever do that? Listen, I don't want to uh, offend anybody or get them upset, but please don't do that. Here's an alleyway I spent many times. This building right here, this used to be called Milson Mills. Milson Mills has a history. It employed quite a few people in the neighborhood, actually a lot of people in the neighborhood. There was a lot of knitting and sewing factories. My mother was a sewer when she wasn't in, working in the healthcare industry. And what was really cool about this is I'm gonna show you eventually. I used to ride my bike down here during the day and it was so cool because I could say hello to my mother at her window and her friends loved it. And sometime I would go across the street to the store and get her at a soda machine, a Tab soda. She loved Tab. That was her favorite soda. Do you remember what Tab was? Do you? Can you get me an image of it online? Do they have any images out there? Do they even make Tab soda anymore? Oh my goodness. Let me tell you something. It's funny because I told you I moved every three years or so. Some of the toughest guys in the neighborhood right here, they lived here. They were amazing. And let me tell you something. They were the kind of people, the brothers, the brotherhood, they were up a level. They were up a level. That brotherhood was very tight and up a level, right? The only people that really connected with that brotherhood, okay, are people we don't even know. And my superhero superhero see and if things got too far out of hand with outsiders coming in let me tell you this tight brotherhood over here I was friends with one of their family actual family members a cousin or what have you and with that being said if things really got out of hand my superhero friend and that tight brotherhood they take care of it that the situation you will never have to worry about it again and I guarantee you when they took care of it they took care of it now how did they take care of it I don't know nobody ever got shot they never shot but I'll tell you what sometimes things got violent sometimes things got out of hand sometimes people got into fights and they were hurt really bad because this was such a tight community children were family the families were family and there was different levels of brotherhood Brothers over here sometimes might get into an argument with the brothers over there and it got ugly because they were all very, listen to me, very tough people, very tough people, very tough. Tracy Lynn never, never got into a fight with them, never got into a fight. They already knew I was no match. They already knew Tracy Lynn was no match. I'm not a fighter. They knew that. Everybody knew that in the neighborhood that Tracy Lynn wasn't a fighter. They knew it because the superhero over here saved me one day and I'm gonna show you that spot so I'm not gonna to talk too much in it and I'm not gonna hold it on their house because I don't know if they still live there but can I just say my superhero friend in real life form he lived here he lived here and I love him I love him to death to this day let me tell you something he was an older brother and a superhero somebody that I looked up to I spent a lot of time in his house he taught me a lot on a daily basis 
I took him home to introduce him to my mother. And my mother kind of responded a little weird. She, I think she was doing her hair at the time. My mom always looked beautiful. She always curled her hair, did her makeup. And for some reason, my superhero friend over here, who became my older brother, right? She didn't really care for it first. Now this is where another jealousy came in because I looked up to him so much. He saved me when bullies came through on their bicycles. And I'm gonna show you up here a little bit later on. Remind me if you can. Send me a comment, say, hey, you, did, you didn't show us where those bullies got you for the first time in your city of Lebanon. Well, let me tell you something like, like this. When these bullies came up on their bicycles, I was on my bicycle in town. I remember that bicycle I got for $25? We brought it into town. And I was riding it one day, and these two boys stopped me. They, they kind of put a roadblock on, you know? And let me just tell you something. They pushed, they pushed me right off my bike and onto the ground. And I was so excited because he had one of the coolest bikes ever. He had mag wheels on it. Do you know what mag wheels are? Did you ever see them? He had a blue, if I'm not mistaken, it was a Columbia bike, maybe? Was it a Columbia bike? Did you ever hear those? It had yellow mag wheels. I don't even know if they make bikes like that. That was a big deal when I was a kid. Bicycles with mags. I had spokes on mine, very shiny spokes. Can you imagine what a sissy like me with shiny spokes attracted to itself? Can you imagine what the guys in the neighborhood with magged bikes, what they thought of me? They had Nike sneakers and mag wheel bikes. Can you imagine what they thought of Tracy Lynn in the neighborhood? Who's this sissy? Look at the sparkly rims that they have. And I always shined them. I always washed my bike and I waxed it. It was a big deal to me to take good care of my bicycle. Listen. When that happened, he was from a distant. Nobody ever in my life, nobody ever came to my rescue like that, that I remember. Maybe they did. Do you think maybe it was possible that I wasn't aware or given it? Maybe I'm not given credit where credit is due. But nobody came to my rescue. Right now I'm here on a bridge. I hear a train from a distant. You're gonna hear that I have a history with bridges and water. See the water down there? And trains. But we're getting back here, away from the bridge. Even though I'm here, see? friend who saved me. He was a hero. A true hero. A real life hero. Okay? Not like the fairy tale heroes that we hear about or read about in magazines. Not like the ones we see on television. A lot of those heroes, they have scripts. They're acting. They're getting paid to do what they do. He didn't get paid. He didn't get paid. He wasn't a fairy tale. He wasn't an illusion. A lot of times people create illusions and fairy tales and sitcoms and stories that are just so mind-blowing that we want to believe it because we don't have those people in our lives. But let me tell you something, Tracy Lynn had one of those heroes in her life and it was nothing like you see on television. And in most situations, let us just say that the people on television, I don't want to insult anybody, but the odds of Superman or Batman or anyone like that coming to our rescue Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Maybe Scooby-Doo will come to our rescue. But the odds of that happening when we need them the most, slim to none. Slim to none. Mickey Mouse, maybe. Donald Duck or Goofy. Let me hear your favorite Goofy. Can I hear your favorite Goofy? If that's possible, will you send me your favorite Goofy maybe in an email? My name is Tracy Lynn. Down here is my website. I'm trying to avoid promoting myself too much because I'm trying to rush through my life story at this time, I do not have a home base. I'm kind of traveling around, and I'm, I'm sharing with the last 40 years of my life. Right now, we are here in Lebanon, Pennsylvania, across the street from my hero's house. I was being bullied one day up on Lafayette Street, just up from 13th and Lafayette. Remember, we always said the numbers first, and then the signs. What about you? How do you say your streets? Does it matter to you? Do you even care? Maybe you don't care. Look it up online, Google it. You will see Tracy Lynn, also known as VCAT. And I gotta drink a little water. I'm gonna try to go down here to the bathroom if it's possible. Hopefully they'll be nice to me and let me use their restroom. Now here's the thing. There is so much history in this place 
way more that I remember being here. It feels like almost yesterday. Do you ever feel like it was almost yesterday to you, but it was years ago? Maybe you are 75, 72, 73. Maybe you're 50. Maybe you're 40, 30, 20. Do you ever feel like just it was just yesterday? I'm telling you, there are so many memories here. I could go on and on. I'm just gonna rush through this neighborhood. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm pinched for time and uh, I'm gonna continue to move on. I wanna hit the critical moments in my life without going too deep. It's very important. I got to meet my first hero, real life. He wasn't fake, he wasn't Superman, he wasn't Mickey Mouse. I don't think any one of those guys would have come and saved me at any time. You know, I could be wrong. The Dukes of Hazard show up in a General Lee, maybe? You think Bo and Luke Duke would save Daisy? Maybe in a sitcom? You know, but would they do it in real life? Was it just a paycheck? Were they pretending? Or are they re the real deal? What do you think? I'm just curious. I'm just curious. What do you, or do you watch that much television that you're under the illusion that that stuff is real? Do these people really care about one another? Is it a brother and sisterhood? What about like in this neighborhood? Did you have different levels? Did you have different levels of people where you had a family and then you had a group of people a little bit higher up that nobody messed with from that family, but they protected and oversaw the neighborhood? And then on top of that, you had the powerhouses who lived at the end of the street in the big houses. Isn't that ironic? They lived in the big houses and they were powerhouses. Yes, they were. You didn't mess with them. I'm not saying anything bad. They were amazing people. They never messed with me. In fact, they became friends with me and they saved me. They saved me. I was born to be protected. <laughs> I really was. Uh, not because I'm smart or I can't take care of myself, but because I don't like to fight. I'm, uh, I'm really about love. A lot of times when I'm under stress, I may say things that I later regret. You know, things like that. I'm going to show you where I used to get my mom a drink really quick. This was very crucial because remember, I love my mom. I loved my mom so much. Here we are by the bridge, right across the street from the superhero's house. Some things that I've done okay. that I really do regret. Uh, not necessarily regret, or I wish I wouldn't have done, but I did. And I, I, I learned in life not to beat myself up because I, I made what the world calls mistakes. Maybe they weren't mistakes. What do you think? Do you think they were mistakes? Do you think me trying to kiss boys in the neighborhood was a mistake? I would have to say yes, because I violated their boundaries, maybe. You know? Like that girl violated her boundary when she tackled me. Like I was a football player. I check this out. I check this out. Over here, at this window. Oh, look at this. I want to tell you this story. I used to come to this window on a regular basis to visit my mother. <sighs> on my bicycle. I missed her. She got off at three, usually home by 3.30, quarter after three, because she would talk to her friends or what have you. Maybe sometimes a little later. And I used to stare, look here. See that window? I used to ride up here on my bike. Now I'm not sure if this was the exact window, but I think it was. This is kind of fenced in. It might have been a window up. But she would be working there, looking out the window, and I remember how sad I felt. My mom was working. It might have been up a window or two, I'm not sure. This is Milson Mills on the corner here of Walnut Street and 12th. So it's 12th and Walnut, because Walnut and 12th doesn't sound very good, does it? No, it doesn't. I remember this hill was really long and hard for me to ride my bike up. Did you ever ride up any hills that were really challenging to go up? Well, let me tell you something. It was really challenging for me to go up that hill. Check this out. And you had to be careful. These cars come speeding around. Even standing here, you got to be careful. Always be careful when you are walking or riding your bike where there's cars passing through. This is where my mother worked. I came here and I would see her working and I wanted so bad to be with her. And I know how much she loved her kids. I didn't want to see her working. I wanted to see her at home loving us loving all the kids in the neighborhood because remember i told you a few films back 
everybody in this neighborhood right here is where it really started. Everyone called her, everyone called her mom. Everyone called her mom. Mom, everyone called you mom, you know it, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. And the whole neighborhood loved her. Remember, this was a brotherhood, sisterhood, neighborhood. That's what it was. This is still a brotherhood. Is it still a brotherhood in here? Please tell me. Please tell me. Do you live on Lafayette Street in Lebanon, Pennsylvania? Do you have brothers and sisters all around the neighborhood? Do you have a powerhouse at the end of the street still that oversees everything, makes sure that everybody's all right? Because they're allowed. If they have to, they will. They're, they're, they'll be gentle. They would always be gentle on the neighborhood kids unless they really got out of line. But if you were an outsider, do you think they were gentle? <laughs> do you think they were gentle? Do you think they liked people coming into their neighborhood and starting up trouble? I guarantee you, they did not. Okay, we're gonna leave it at that because I don't want to upset them to this day. They might laugh about it if they come across this video. But I'm here to tell you, they protected us and it was a good thing. It was a good thing. Because the signal was known not only in this neighborhood, the signal was known throughout the whole city, the whole entire county. People knew, and that's the way it was in this city. There was a whole lot of different neighborhoods, and let me tell you something. I'll be honest with you, okay, can I be honest without you getting offended or upset? Can I be honest with you? Hello? Can I be honest with you without you getting upset? Can I say that it had to do with your physical appearance too? There were times you have dark skin, Dark-skinned people live up, Father. The white community was down here. It's not like that anymore. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. See, there was separation just because of skin color. I don't know why. Okay, let's not let's not focus on just that. Okay, please, please, please don't don't feel that I'm discriminating, and please let us not think that I'm judging anybody. I'm just saying, in our city, years ago, in the '80s, there was a dark-skinned community and there was a white-skinned community. I was in the white-skinned community. But it was beginning to change shortly after I moved out of here. It's beginning to change over. And that's a healthy thing. I'm very grateful. Because I was secluded and away from a dark, darker skin community. Except for I did tan. So sometimes I got away with stuff. I had dark hair. And uh, unfortunately it was long. And I love long hair. So that kind of was a dead giveaway, right? Sometimes. You know, people were questioning, is this a boy? Is this a girl? Is it a sissy? You know? That's why we had tough guys over here. They looked over the sissies. I love them guys so much. You know, they probably don't want me to say that too loud. I will not say their names. They didn't want the world to know that they protected a sissy, you know. But here's the thing, check this out. The bottom line is, even skin color separated neighborhoods. Now, I don't know the whole details of it. I don't want to get all lost in that. But I just want to tell you, do you know, do you know what it's like to go from uh, a white neighborhood to a darker skinned neighborhood? Do you? Am I saying that properly? What about a black neighborhood? What if I said that? Would that offend you? Because I don't want to offend anybody. And by the way, I love Italian men. They have dark skin, a lot of them. Not everyone, but a lot of them. I'm German. I can't help where my ancestors came from and what color skin I have. I can't help the color of the hair. I want blonde hair, okay? Get, get over it. Get over it. I like blonde hair on Tracy Lynn. I've been told time and time again to let my hair be dark. I don't want it dark. Not right now, maybe another time. Maybe someday I'll want it green. Green, green is the color, green is me. Okay, check this out. So, with that being said, I don't mean to offend anybody or hurt anybody. Let's just get to the point we got a lot to do here yet today. But know this, whenever I would ride my bike, or I would go somewhere, I'd be scared because I heard fairy tales. Does it mean it was true? If you go up there, up 12th Street, 12th Street was a tough neighborhood up there. You go up to 12th Street, Tracy Lynn, they have different colored skin and they will beat you. They will be, and guess what? I was scared. I was scared before I even left the neighborhood. I never left the neighborhood. I wanted to stay where I was safe, where I was protected. I was oppressed into staying into this neighborhood and making friends with people who looked a little bit different with the skin color. That's horrible. Today I'm not. Today I'm not. Today I like all walks of life. I don't care about your sexuality. I don't care about your choice of clothing. I don't care. All I care, you know what I care about? I don't care about skin color. Look at me. I don't care about skin, look at me. I don't care about your skin color. I don't care about uh, anything, anything. I don't care about your physical appearance. Can I tell you that? What I care about is are you well-mannered when you talk to me, when you leave comments down below? 
Are you well-mannered to me? Let's be respectful. Let's speak our mind. How do we really feel about the way the generations before have oppressed us into believing that just because of skin color, and that happened on the other side too. You don't want to go down there. You don't want to go down there to the whiteies. You don't want to go down there, and they called us all kinds of names. Let's just leave those names out. But you don't want to go down there to the light-skinned people. Why? Why? Why why can't we say, hey, come to our come to our neighborhood. Let's have fun. Sometimes people did, sometimes people. Very few. Very few. I wasn't exposed to a whole lot of darker skinned people. Not yet. Not yet. Let me explain. I got still more to share with you in my life journey. I wasn't yet exposed. It was mostly dominantly light skin colored like myself. German. A lot of German ancestry. But I also like dark skinned men. Period. Okay? Yes, it is true. Tracy Lynn, who the doctor is called a boy, is attracted to Italian men. And not only Italian men, but dark skinned men. Can I say black? Can I say black? Because when I'm talking to them, we could joke around now that I have friends. Okay? African Americans. Whatever's polite. Please tell me what's polite. What do you think is polite? Let me know. We're all different places in our life journey. You might not have liked that I said black or white. You might not have liked that I said African American or American and African. I don't know. I'm a German. I don't make a big deal out of it. Why do people make a big deal out of it? I understand we go through things. Listen, I want to tell you straight up. Here's something new about me. I'm a transsexual. Did you know that? You already knew that. Everybody already knew that. You're probably thinking, are you a transsexual? Because you don't look like a transsexual. You look gay. You look gay to me. Do I look gay to you? Because let me tell you something. It's okay. It's okay if I look gay to you. I struggled with that for a long time. Because I wanted to fit expectations of what a girl should be. Not only did I want to blend in, and you'll find out when I share my life story, to be a boy and to be a man. A tough man who could take care of themselves and didn't need a powerful Italian man to hold on to late at night. Or have be held while I hold my teddy bear. Okay. Do you have a problem with that? Are you turning off YouTube now? Are you turning down the volume? Are you saying, are you reclining back in your chair and saying, I no longer want to listen to this person talk? I thought this was a girl. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe you were pleasing yourself somehow. And all of a sudden you realize this is, this isn't what I thought it was. Give me time. Wait, mister. Wait, miss. Wait, hold on. Wait. Don't click off. Don't turn down the volume. Listen, give me an opportunity to talk. You can talk back. Send me a link to a video. Send me an email. I'm very open about my life. Don't give me a phone call. I don't answer phone. I take emails. And you can go onto Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash Tracy Lynn 21. I'm talking very fast. Okay? Very fast because I'm very limited to the amount of time that I can stay here. I don't wish that I had more time to stay here. But I'm only here temporarily to share with you my life story. Some life-changing moments. Right now I'm getting ready to go down here where I used to take a soda every once in a while over here to my mom at Milson Mills to give her a tab okay I'm telling you about how our neighborhood was divided up amongst skin color and I think that's horrible okay let's make this clear it's horrible same with sexuality it's horrible it's horrible it's horrible it's horrible that we judge people by their physical appearance can I tell you that can I take off my hat and tell you that's wrong can I can I tell you it's wrong, mister? Can I tell you it's wrong? <laughs> because guess what? I just told you it's wrong. It's wrong. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to tell you it's wrong. All right. Well, did I get the fire stirred up in you? Did I get the fire stirred up in you? I hope so. I want you to tell me your feelings. I look ridiculous. Hold on a minute. Uh, if you're hot and you're Italian, please don't click. Don't click off. Give me a chance. Give me a chance to explain myself. You may be the man of my dreams. I may be the, the woman of the lady. The lady you've been looking for your whole life. How's this one? Good look. Good look. What about here? Look at my boobies. Oh, did I say that? Shame on me. I said boobies. Listen to me. Check this out. Let's not, let's not focus on physical appearance. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Can we go deeper? Okay, here's the thing. Check this out. I'm gonna go over here and try to use the restroom. Sometimes businesses don't like that. But I gotta do it. I got one more battery left. 
We're running low here. It looks like it may rain. I want to continue going through this neighborhood, get some crucial things done, and let's get out of here, okay? I got many other things to show you. Right up the road is the first time that I got molested by a friend myself. Notice how things have happened really quick. I'm going to share with this with you really quick. So, separation of parents, separation of going to school, getting held back. Notice how I said something happened that ignited my imagination at home number two, over here at home number three. I ended up trying to kiss somebody, but then somebody tackled me. Notice I'm saying somebody. Let's forget boys, girls. Somebody tackled me. They tackled me and kissed me, and I didn't want to be kissed. Now I go over to this next neighborhood. Eventually, not today, not today, maybe tomorrow if it doesn't rain. Go over to that neighborhood. I'm going to tell you, it's the first time that someone I trusted who was a friend of mine fully took advantage of me and forced me to do things. I wanted to do, but I was scared to do, so I insisted I didn't want to do. What do you think of that? Kind of confusing, huh? Yes. Because remember, I loved boys. My what uncle was my first attraction. Notice how things happen. Paying it forward? Am I receiving what I deserve from neighborhood three to number four? I would say so. Maybe. 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 Maybe I didn't deserve that. Maybe I deserved forgiveness. Forgiveness, huh? But what goes around comes back around sooner or later. Okay? So, I got my turn. I'm sorry for everything that I've ever done. I know people are sorry for what they've done to me. Even the bully that pushed me over my bike. I'm going to show you the spot. My friend, my superhero. I haven't talked to him for a long time. I love him. I have a lot of stories to share with him. He's like a big brother to me. My superhero. My superhero brother. And this was an amazing place. There used to be railroad tracks here. And sometimes a little tra a big train would go through here. Had a lot of amazing things. My first fort was down the road there on that railroad track. But I gotta go to the bathroom really quick, okay? I'm sorry, I can't hold it. On the way back, I'll quick show you where my fort was. We're gonna continue to walk. This has to happen very fast. Are you getting anything from this? Do you understand why I'm rushed? Oh, I'm looking forward to taking a break. Really, not now, not now, not now. After I catch up. Catch up, catch up running down my face. Did you ever have that happen? Catch up running down my face. Did you ever have it running down your shirt? Did you ever have catch up running down your shirt? Will you give me a kiss? Will you give me a kiss? In this neighborhood, we kissed. But in that neighborhood, guess what? I was getting older. Even more happens back in that neighborhood. I look back on it now. It took me years to heal from that. It took me years to heal. What did I do? I tried to kiss somebody, and now I got tackled and I got kissed. Everybody's kissing, and I was really disgusted with kissing girls. Oh, I have so many stories, so many stories in this neighborhood. I can't keep up with everything. I'm realizing it is a lot of work, a lot to share with you, and I'm on a tight schedule. So let me just say this. I'm going to go to the restroom, and I'm going to come back. Notice my voice is going to change a few times. I'm having a hard time here. I don't know why. Probably because I'm talking all the time. I rarely sleep. I've been working trying to edit this film. I'm having a hard time uploading everything because it is a lot of footage. Be patient. Give me time. Know that this is going to be unedited unless I hit a name. If I hit a name, please tell me. I don't want to have to take the film down, but if I haven't said a last name, chances are I'm going to let it slide anyway because nobody's going to know who you are. So don't worry. When I say brother, sister, you don't know what, what I mean by brother or sister. You don't know what I mean by uncle. You really don't. So get over it. Can I tell you get over it? Okay, thank you. I don't mean that in a mean way. Get over it. It took me a hard time. Let me tell you something. This is a, a very tight community. Years ago, uh, there was a conscious awareness and everybody pretty much thought the same. We all had the same fears. We shared in those fears together. They were oppressed by people who knew more. Okay, and wanted to dominate the masses, even in this city, even in this neighborhood, even in this neighborhood. Hey guys, how's it going? It's me again. Thank goodness I got to use that restroom. Now listen to me. I'm sorry that I'm rushing through this. And I'm sorry that I'm mixing a lot of things up. It may be confusing to a lot of you. Okay? I'm doing the best I can under situations that I'm in right now. Maybe later at another date I'll explain. But just know that this is home three where we had a knit tight family community. It was the first time I had a lot of friends. Not necessarily friends, friends like I would consider them nowadays. But we, we basically, we were all considered friends back then. That's what we thought. So anyway, there was a, a fort back here. 
Okay, down this, uh, there used to be a railroad bed, and we used to build a fort, and in that fort, through the neighborhood, we are now leaving you, this is where we first Milton learned. Mills, yeah. the place I used to meet my mom at work. I cried when she had to go to work. I didn't want her to go to work, you know. So here we go. We're going to walk up through. I remember I was telling you that there was a lot of separation with whites and blacks. Can I leave it at that? Can I make it simple? Okay. Let's not get too technical because in our neighborhood later on, Spanish people came along through Espanol. <laughs> and uh, this was, it was a smaller, in this community, there wasn't as many. It was mainly African American, if you will. I don't know. Please help me out with this. Help me out. Help me out. I'm kind of putting my foot in my mouth, am I? Listen, tough guy. Listen, tough guy. I don't mean, I don't mean to offend you. I don't mean to hurt you. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt you. I'm German. Make fun of a German. Make fun of a German. I'm not going to be insulted. I'm not going to be insulted. Hi, Hitler. Hi, Hitler. Remember? Remember he ran our country there for a while, right into the ground. Uh, okay. So here we go. Check this out. Oh, did I find a lot of people there, huh? Maybe. I'm American. I was born in America. We're, anybody who was born in America, we're American. Okay, but I'm trying to help you better understand that there was a lot of skin colored separation, physical appearance. It's very sad. But this church here, this was the church that I would come walk by and they would have church service during the week sometimes. And that was the first time I was really truly exposed to another skin color other than white. Let me tell you something. They were always nice to me. And I would peek my head in sometimes and they would smile and motion me to go in. They were never me. But I was scared. I was scared because uh, I didn't, I wasn't educated. I didn't know. I did not know, okay? Can you forgive me for that? I'm educated now a little bit. I want to learn more. I want to learn more. I really do. I, I love to learn. Teach me. Will you teach me? Will you teach me? Will you teach me not to be scared? to share my life story and, and share the truth as to how I became exposed to others with different backgrounds. Huh? I was raised in the country, remember? Come to the city, this is the first time. This is an adventure for me as a child growing up. Wow, I never even in my whole life, I went to an all white school when I was living in the country. I really did. Not anymore, not anymore. It's not like that, and listen, it's not like that anymore, okay? It's not like that. Get over it, get over it. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm not trying to upset you, okay? I'm trying to be your friend. Let's be honest here. Can we, do we have room for honesty? Can we be honest without insulting anyone? You can insult me though. <laughs> I love you guys. Just don't hurt me. Just don't hurt me. Just don't hurt me. You can spank me maybe. Maybe we can get together and you can spank me, okay? Wait here, check this out. So that was the first time, but remember I was telling you about Lucky? A little bit earlier, I was telling you about Lucky with a pickup truck reminded me of Sanford and Son. I was trying to give you a hint. I'm gracing conversation in here. Sanford and Son. What skin color were they? Huh? I don't want to say. What was it? You know. You know what it was. Sanford and Son was one of my favorite shows. And that's why they reminded me of that. Yes, old Grady Shady. And let me tell you something. They reminded me of that. And we loved them. And they loved us. They loved us. So we have two... Two people down there, maybe three people, their friends would stop by, they had junk cars and, and, and through like, I don't mean that in a mean way, but they were like old cars that were sitting in their yard. We loved it. We loved it. We would hide back there sometimes. And he loved us. And he'd always be nice to us. Let me tell you something. They were always nice to us. And it was usually older. But I didn't have friends um, of diversity back in those days. I did not at that time. Not at that time. Okay? Not, not children. It was adults. We met a lot of adults. So as a little kid, you know, you're looking up. And you're like, um, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not used to this. I'm not used to this. I'm not used to this. I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. And they always made it a very pleasant experience. They were always very friendly. Remember I told you, Halloween, we always got pennies. Every little child needs penny for penny candy. Over here, we got a Christian community. I think it was Catholic, Catholic school, high school. According to the gentleman I talked to the other day at a pizza place, a lot of this stuff is starting to go to disappear. And I, I gotta say, can I say this to you openly, freely? I'm grateful. Are you grateful? I'm grateful. And I'll tell you why. Because I'm realizing that more so than not, school institutions, places of uh, worship, they're gathering places of the ideas of somebody and somebody joined forces with somebody else who had similar ideas. And next thing you know, it skyrockets and they're educating the local kids 
and the neighborhood and the parents under their belief system. Under their belief. Why do you think there's so many wars in the war? Do you, do you have any ideas why there's war? I'm curious to know. Why are we fighting amongst ourselves when really, you know, it's just people's ideas of how we should be living. Everybody has a different culture. Can we respect? Can we live and let live like the lightning bugs? Why, why should there be separation? Why should there be... Huh? What, what, what should I say? A, a darker skin? Is that better? Come on, tell me. Tell me. See, it's already too late because I said darker skin community, white skin community. Should there be separation or should there be unity? Obviously, there should be unity. 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 Because I'll tell you what right now, I love Italian men. <laughs> I love Italian men. And I also like dark skinned men of all kinds. All kinds. All kinds of backgrounds. I don't know why. Maybe because it look, makes me look wider. And remember, I was a BDSM model at one time. Submissive. You know, I like to be spanked. I like to pretend I'm in control sometimes. Sometimes. Not all the times. Sometimes I like to pretend I'm in control, but not all the times. Wow, we got a lot to cover here. As I'm talking to you, no. Why, why can't we have unity? And we're realizing that every day. Before it was a physical appearance. Now I think a lot of times, my situation, I told you I'm a transsexual. Transsexual, what do you ask? Is that, please listen, give me an opportunity to talk. A little bit at a time. I told you about Lucky and then didn't I start talking about other things that gave you, gave it away what I was trying to get at. I'm noticing that's what a lot of church leaders do. They grace things into your life. They don't tell you everything right away. It's too much too soon. But give me a chance. Please don't back away. Please don't shut me down. You can humiliate me. You can tell me I had you figured out. That was so easy. I'm surprised that you're a transsexual lady. I'm so, or you're a she-male. You're a lady boy. You're a sissy. Whatever you want to say. I don't care. I don't care. I really don't care. I'm past that. I'm past that. I want your friendship. That's what I want. I want your friendship. I want to get to know about you. I want to get to know about what your life was like. Do you get it? I don't care what you think about me. Just give me a chance. Give me a chance. Give me a chance right there from your living room, from your office. You can be cleaning. You can be working on your car. I don't care what age you are. I don't care if you're listening to me on, a, uh, on an iPhone, iPod, whatever. I don't know. I don't understand all this technology we have. How about this? How about this? You start sending me a link. I'll subscribe, I'll subscribe to your channel. You subscribe to mine. And let's get to know each other. And you can make fun of me too. You know, that would be great. I'd love to turn on YouTube and see videos of people making fun of me. Oh, here's Tracy Lynn, also known as VCAT, walking through a neighborhood. I'm at Lafayette and 12th Street, or 12th and Lafayette. Oh, let me tell you something. We often walked around here. We often walked around here. It's too much to share. Life began to manifest at a high rate of speed in this neighborhood. Understand, we were very tight. This street right here, I don't know what it's called, alleyway. A lot of things happened in this alleyway. We had friends up here, tough, tough family up here. A couple of them. We even had a girl that lived here that I better not say. I was going to say her name, but I won't say it. I'm going to let that go for now. I'll share it at another date. Maybe. Maybe because it's not fair if I use anybody else's name, even their first name. So if I use your name, get over it. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> it's a lot for me to remember, but I'm not using last names. I don't even remember last names. But isn't it funny? I don't remember a lot of names of people that I meet on a regular basis, but I do remember names of people that I grew up with. Are you like that? Do you remember the names of different people that you grew up with? Do you remember things of craziness, of being separated? What about now? There's a lot of issue going on with LGBT community. You know, gays, transsexuals, bisexuals, lesbians. We're trying to figure all this out. Why are we putting all these labels on people? Why cannot people just be people? Huh? And whatever they're trying, I understand labels. You want to let, but you want to get them, you want to get to say, oh, listen, I'm a transsexual, so I want to be very forward. You got to put me in a category somewhere and put a label on my forehead. Is that it? Is that what, that's what the world taught me. You got to put a label on my forehead so people know right up front. Then somewhere there's signals going out. Somewhere there is a hot Italian man who's very powerful, very secure with his manhood, who may want a private life with Tracy Lynn. What do you think about that? I think that's wonderful. I would love that myself. So I'm very, very open with my life. And it's not just because of that reason. It's just because I want to educate people. I want to let them know that I'm no different than anybody else. We pretty much grew up in different neighborhoods. They may have been, may look different in appearance because of humans. Maybe we had different cultures. Maybe we ate different foods. What kind of food did you eat? At that time, we were doing a lot of backyard barbecues. Chicken was always my favorite. What about you? Okay. 
So here, check this out. I'm going to share something else. Remember, I was a little thief sometimes, but I did it out of pure pressure. I did it out of pure pressure. I didn't do it because I wanted to. I'm not a thief. Oh my goodness, I just burp. I'm sorry. I'm not a thief now. And I burp. I fart too. They used to have it on YouTube. I told you they removed it from me. Uh, maybe someday I'll do it again in my diaper. Right here. Check this out. We used to sleep here in blankets. Right here between apartment buildings. Right over by, over here, the tennis court. Okay, now check this out. We used to sleep there with some of the tough guys in the neighborhood. I felt safe. They never hurt me. Never hurt me. I felt safe for the most part, but I felt like the underdog. So these guys were fast. Let me tell you, some of these kids in the neighborhood, did you ever meet people like that that can run? Oh my goodness, these kids could run. And remember, I told you when I was little, my legs were too little. I couldn't keep up with everybody in my own family, let alone my family now that is at large, the whole neighborhood. <laughs> I couldn't keep up with anybody. I was always the underdog. I was always the underdog, but I was appreciated by some, like my superhero friend, my brother, my sisters, they looked out for me very tightly. They knew, they knew that Tracy Lynn was the underdog here. Okay, Tracy Lynn doesn't like to fight. She, she likes to play and have a good time. I pretended a lot too, even during these days. Remember I told you my imagination started, I had pretend friends. Even though I had real life friends here, I never let go of my pretend friends, never. Let me tell you something, even to this day, I have pretend friends, okay? I have pretend friends even here. Had friends over here. Let me tell you, some of the fastest kids in the neighborhood lived up in this area. Some of them wouldn't even talk to me. Some of them just wouldn't talk to me because I was not cool, but it was well known that you don't mess with Tracy Lynn. You don't mess with Tracy Lynn because Tracy Lynn has some pretty powerful friends. You would say up the street. It looks like it's down the street, but just because it's down the street, know this, it was up the street, trust me, in the minds of everybody else. You, you don't mess with the people in the big house. And if they're friends with anybody, you don't mess with them. That was cool, right? Thank goodness I was saved. They sent off the signal that day where I was telling you about. I'm not going to go back down there right now. That's where it happened. Let's, let's go down here. Come on. Come on, let's run down here. We'll walk around in the back. I got one or two more places to show you. We're going to have to leave and come back. This is going to have to be a two-part. A two-part series. Do you mind? I'm rushing through here, through the neighborhood on Lafayette Street in London, Pennsylvania. Because I really want to show you this stuff. Now listen, two things crucial happened here at the same spot. Some would say this is an unlucky spot for us. So come here, check it out. For our tight family. Remember I told you about my friend, a superhero down the road? You're gonna hear me talk about him a lot. He's my superhero friend. How about that? You mind that? You mind if I say does he mind if I say that? His wife might mind. I don't know. His friends might tease him about it, I don't know. I hope not. I hope not. I hope people are understanding. They tease, they tease in love. Right here, check this out. Right here. Right here, just off of Lafayette Street in the alleyway by Suzuki, of course. See how far down? Obviously at the end of the tennis court. May I tell you this? This is where I got pushed off my bicycle. And way down there, way down there, I can't even, can't point it out, but where that van is, you know, way, even way down there, past the blue one. Do you see the blue one down there? Can you see that? Way down there at the basketball court. Here, here we got two kids on a bike. Way down there. Way down there. Let me tell you something. He saw these two kids push me off of a bike. And when they pushed me off of a bike, he came barreling down through here really fast. He was really fast on his bike. A lot of guys were very fast on their bikes. Whew, they got away with all kinds of stuff, which I'm not going to tell you what they did. I'm going to stay focused on my life did. Now check this out. A couple things happened here. I got pushed off my bike. My superhero friend came up, told him right away. Told him right away. And then he took me, told him right away. What did he tell him? I don't remember exactly what he told him, but I knew that the sign was signaled, or signaled the sign of them, signaled the sign, the sign of the signal. The bottom line is you do not mess with them. In fact, he got off his bike. I'm not sure if he hurt them or not. I don't remember, but I do know that those two guys were not from this neighborhood. If they were, they were from way up the street. And way up the street didn't mess around with anybody down here, okay? They didn't mess with anybody down here. And with that being said, he came to my rescue. I was so grateful. So grateful that after these bullies left, did you ever get bullied? Did you ever get bullied? I got bullied a lot. Sometimes I still do, as you guys seen. Guy coming out, he sees me with my camera. 
Let me tell you, I got all kinds of stories for you. All kinds. I'm rushing through it. I'm sorry. Let me tell you something. These bullies never played with me again because of my superhero friend. And I was so proud, so happy. This only happens on TV to Tracy Lynn. I only my see this on TV. This Look never happened to Tracy Lynn. Let's just ever give me life. more. I never needed anyone to protect me, really. Not I much, is it? Oh, look, look at this bicep. Look at that bicep. Let me tell you something. I'm small. At one time I was pretty big, but at that time I was small as well. I'm going to get into all that a little bit later. But this guy, so muscular, so strong. I never seen muscles like that on anybody. Amazing, amazing man. Still to this day, as far as I know, he has amazing forearms. He is a powerhouse. If there's ever a bolt on your car that you need off, you don't need air tools, you need my friend. He will break that nut right off of the bolt or whatever it is, and he will take care of it for you. He will take care of it for you. Okay, so check this out. Not only did that happen, but look here. My sister, and I know I'm not talking about other people's lives, I want to show you why this is a bad area. Okay, it's a bad area. Bad area. Tracy Lynn got bullied. And my sister, I'll never forget. My sister, can you see this? Here, let me flip this around. See that manhole cover? Do you see this? Uh-oh. Hold on. Can you see me? Am I still on? See that manhole cover? Do you see that? My sister was riding her bike, racing down the hill. Racing down the hill she was, and all of a sudden she hit that, and she ended up hitting her chin. I'm so sorry that happened to you. I'm so sorry that happened to you. I really am, that is not funny. It's not funny, it's not funny. And I don't wanna talk about other people's lives too much, but let me tell you something, that was a horrible experience to me because it's the first time I saw my sister bleeding really bad. Remember I told you I skinned my knee. It's the first time I hurt myself, had methylate on. This was not a methylate incident. This was a serious, serious incident and traumatizing to me because I love my sister. Yes, we've played some jokes on each other, some pranks, but um, let me tell you something. This brought me a whole lot closer to her because I'll never forget visiting her in the hospital. If I remember correctly, her mouth was wired shut for a period of time. I'm so sorry that happened to you. It, it's definitely impacted my life greatly. And that day when I went to the hospital and I saw her, I was so scared, but I wanted to be happy for her. And I believe we cried. And when I saw her cry, I cried. And uh, from that day forward, I loved her even more. Deeper, deeper, not more, deeper. Deeper, I love you more, deeper. I'm so sorry that happened to you. We were children, things happened. And did that ever happen to you? Did you ever see somebody you love, or you didn't realize you love? Something like that happened to anybody, and all of a sudden it just brought you deeper into a relationship. That, if I, that it's still, obviously, you saw, I'm holding back tears. I don't want to cry this time. I don't want to cry when I'm sharing my life story. I don't want to be too much of a sissy. But I was about ready to come cry. come down here and play baseball. And that's As you can see, bleachers. That's how much I fell in love. Now, I used to often look at those bleachers from a distance, over here in a baseball field. Okay, over here in a baseball field. I always played the outfield at one time. I was on Lebanon Valley, uh, Lebanon Valley something. <laughs> they used to be called Ace Aluminum. I do remember that. Ace Aluminum was a big foundry. Let me tell you something about Lebanon. Lebanon was thriving off of uh, aluminum and steel, the steel industry. There was Bethlehem Steel Plant that was here. Uh, that's where my mom's boyfriend worked. Absolutely amazing, amazing city thriving off steel and aluminum at that time. But let me tell you something. I remember very clearly, very clearly standing here. Let me tell you something. Look here. And turn it around. There's a pitcher's mound. Don't want to get any cars on here. Home plate. Home plate. Okay, look how far back I am. Now let's look over here at the bleachers to the right. Where I was apologizing for being a kid and doing what I shouldn't have done. Here I am with the catchers. I'm looking over there at those bleachers. You see them? Where are we? 
Can we get it on there? Are they there? Let me just tell you. I used to look over at those bleachers, and over here you'll see there's more baseball fields. It was that baseball field right beside us and this one here. I played outfield. And that was horrible. I was horrible and I was scared of the ball. So whenever that ball came out here, let me tell you something. I flinched. I backed up. I got made fun of. <laughs> Often. But I used to look over here at the bleachers, wishing my mom was there, wishing my family of friends was here, wishing somebody was here. Do you think anybody was there? Huh? You do? No? You don't? Let me tell you something. I look at myself a lot in this monitor. Okay, I look at myself a lot in the monitor. Let me tell you something. There was nobody over there. There was nobody over there. Okay? Nobody that I wanted to be there. There was other people there cheering for other people. Especially a lot of times, the pitcher or the catcher or one of the basemen were usually either the coach's sons at that time or maybe, 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 maybe it was a relative or something. Okay? But let me tell you something. I always wanted something, somebody over here at these bleachers. See them? Look how far they are. My mom would be at home drinking. She drank a lot. I want to leave it at that. She was a heavy drinker. She drank every day. I don't mean to hurt you, Mom. I love you. Okay? I'm not insulting her. I'm just saying she enjoyed drinking. And a lot of times she'd be down there drinking, maybe crying. Remember I told you she cried a lot. Her a lot of stressful life. She lived a stressful life. She worked trying to take care of four kids. Four kids are not easy to take care of. Especially if they're out trying to get milk, okay? Especially if they're trying to get out milk. What are my kids doing? She thought I was such a good child. I wanted to be. Pure pressure. Pure pressure got a hold of me. It ripped my heart out. Mother, it ripped my heart out. It made I love you. I love you, Mom. I'm going to tell you something right now. That hurt. That hurts because I wanted my mother up here. Did my mother feel like me? Did she feel like an outsider? You think so? You think my mother felt like an outsider? Maybe so, but people loved her, remember that. Everybody loved her. But we came down to her house. She would sit on the back porch, that was a big thing. She sat on the back porch. She socialized with everybody. She socialized with everybody. Okay, so she wasn't that much of an outsider and everybody in the neighborhood called her mom and there was a lot of kids that lived here. Let me tell you, I'm starting to run out of battery. Maybe I'm gonna have to slow this down a little bit because I have so much to share. But I shared with you some crucial, crucial times in my life. There's too much to share here. Notice, we were still here the same amount of time as the other places, but there's so many memories here. So many memories. I would often return to this place as I am now and reminisce and think. Think of the first kisses I received. Think of the games we used to get. Think of having friends, or so I thought they were friends. Maybe they weren't friends at all. Maybe they weren't friends at all. Maybe, they, maybe they're like, I wish I would have never known you, Tracy Lynn. I can't believe you just spilled the beans. You narked me out. I didn't nark nobody out. I didn't use your name. I didn't use my name. Did I use my name? Tracy Lynn, also known as VCAT. Let me tell you something. It happened years ago. Years ago. This wasn't yesterday. This wasn't a month ago. Years ago, and I am so sorry. And let me tell you something. I apologize to everyone. And uh, I don't remember ever taking it myself. I remember being a tag-along. And, uh, oh, I got an itch here. And I don't necessarily remember, you know, anything other than, than what, what, what we had gone through. So let's, let's make amends of that. Let's have forgiveness for everybody. Um, a lot of those people anymore, you know, uh, they, whether it happened to them or not, let's just say that just because it happened, I'm so sorry to anybody. Nobody wants that to happen. But let's just say that we have no idea who, whose house we were at and who lived there at that time. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Please forgive me. Okay, so here we are. I'm sharing my childhood because I care. I'm being open. I'm spilling the beans. I'm narking out my friends without using their names. I'm narc. I'm being a narc. And I'm not proud of that. Okay? So I'm not using any names. 
All right, this is not a bad neighborhood. This is a great neighborhood. Neighborhoods change gracefully, okay? There's a lot of diversity here now, a lot of diversity. Thank goodness, thank goodness for that. It's about time we stop dividing ourselves up in this city, or any city, or any state, or any country. We're all together one, we're all together one, we're all together one. Can we say that together? I'm gonna to stop this, because I'm gonna pick up here at the playground. I forget the name of this place. We're at the tennis court in the playground. I shared with you the baseball field. There are so many things I would love to share here. There really is. But let's face it, only a couple years and all this video footage, it could take me months before I get the opportunity to upload it. It could take me months. I'm sorry. I wish I could share this with you sooner. I might not be able to. I might not be able to share this video with you. This might just be for me. I don't know. We'll find out. Maybe for my family members. Maybe for my son. Maybe it's for my son. I hope so. I hope he gets to see it. I hope he really is my son too. And I know that sounds weird. We're going to explain about that. Got a long ways to go. Listen to this. I used to love coming up here on the sliding board. I wish I could share everything. There's so many memories here. I can't keep up with everything. And I wish I could have time to have my tripod out here and show you what we did with this over here. I wish we, we could. I wish I could show you. Listen, there are my sunglasses. Watch this. See how I'm spinning around? I wish there was somebody here to spin me around. I wish you would come and spin me. Will you come and spin me? I wish you'd come and spin me. Let me tell you something, I, I have a big heart. Childlike, very childlike. And uh, this was my childhood neighborhood. What do you think? I'm gonna share a couple more stories. I don't have time to share everything. I want to, I, I wanna take time to show you everything. I wanna hold your hand walk you around the neighborhood just reminisce maybe I've been here long enough there's so much up top so many things I used to dream about things that were going through my head I don't know if there's enough time I hope there is I'll be back